if i look a little bit of tired it's because i have a fever but i also have an interview tomorrow so i have to solve lead code today so we are going to see how much lead code questions i can solve in the next 12 hours it's right now 12 pm we're going to end it at 12 am straight and after every five questions i solve i'm going to give you some guys some tips on maybe like computer programming or just programming in general without further ado because i don't have much energy nor do i have energy to edit out all these things so <laughs> We're gonna go open lead code right away. Starting my screen recording. We are gonna start from today's daily challenge question. Huh. And okay, so one more thing I forgot to say is that we'll be only solving medium and hard. So this problem we are not gonna do. We'll go do it probably some other time of the day. But like today we're just gonna be solving medium and hard problems. Find the original array prefix. So that seems. First question alone, I'm gonna solve it on camera. So I'm gonna start screen recording it. So we have a prefix array of size n and prefix of i is or of every element present till then. And we need to find the original array. Okay, got it. So here one is the or of all these elements. So and Three is the zor of um, all these and all the elements still here. So I think if I take the zor of this and zor it with this, we're gonna get two. Is that correct? Because we have all this and three is everything till here. So when we, when we zor a, when we zor two equal element elements, it becomes zero and zero zor x is x. So this thing would go off and only this would remain and the last element is just going to be 5 so I think that's, got, that's pretty easy for a medium question so we have vector int uh, and so we are going to start from the reverse of pref dot size and then we go i greater than equal to greater than 0 we don't want to go to the last element and start push back of pref of i zor pref of i minus 1 and once all this is complete we can simply push uh, the first element push back of pref of 0 then we have to reverse it and dot begin come on and start end and I think we can write an answer. Not sure, but I think this should work. What is that? Like a one minute solution? Yeah, we did it. I think this question, I just chose it at random and it came out to be pretty easy. So I got lucky that little bit. Okay, so this question, I'm going to uh, classify it as bit magic. Generally, you call it as bit manipulation but manipulation is kind of an iffy word so we're gonna call it bit magic for all of the other questions i'm just going to include the final part of the solution alone explaining a little bit of the question see you guys there second question was sort of easy again we had to keep a online mix online meaning that data would keep coming in there would be a stream of data inflowing we just have to uh, and it was pretty easy i'd classify it as implementation but here I've simply used a map. You can, uh, in case that a delete is involved, here it just did not have a delete. It had just uh, insert. In case delete is involved, you'll ha probably have to use something like a segment tree. Picked another easy question again, and it was simply just this much amount of code. Uh, I just had to do a very basic hashing. So I can keep keep it as a separate tag of hashing, but I'm probably just gonna keep it as implementation again wanted to solve a dp question very bad so solve this question combination sum four and it was a very easy memorization solution i mean this is all the solution was okay finally this was the only problem that actually felt like a medium it is called minimum height trees so you basically have to find out keeping which node as a root you'll have a tree with the minimum height possible so there can be several nodes possible in this way and uh, 
the way you do this is you have to basically think around what the diameter of the tree is going to be when you consider the diameter right there's there's either going to be one node or two nodes and all of these can be obtained by simply removing the uh, nodes that are further most away so here every single node with like zero degree you remove all of these then you have these two nodes which are re remaining in between and these two will act that way so you'll have to consider in some sort of a diameter approach so if you want to learn more about diameters i really recommend that you solve try solving this problem okay, so now that i've solved first five problems i'm going to give the first tip of the day <laughs> that is don't solve problems in the random order like i am doing it's always beneficial to choose one topic and continue to solve problems only on that topic because it will then let your brain understand some patterns that are associated with these problems and i think that is the most efficient way to go about it choose one topic say graph or dp and uh, or maybe like you know even the simpler ones like bit mask or something like that and solve problems on based on only that topic for that whole day and next day choose something else strings or something like that but whatever you do it's always beneficial to stick to one topic per day unless you're like you know in your like in my situation where i have the interview next day in which case it is always beneficial to you know just skim through all the topics so i thought it would be better if i batch all the five questions together and then solve them okay so the first question i solved was a question that had a very dumb description but basically it was just a dfs and uh, there is there was like one slight criteria which i had to follow and the answer was like it was pretty simple then redundant connections was a hard problem and i could not arrive at the answer in time more like i was very bored with this question i did not think it was interesting so i just ended up reading the editorial but like you know i know how how to do it so it's fine the next question was the first missing positive it was I think it uh, you can classify this as a ad hoc question like it doesn't go anywhere. Interesting thing about it was that it was utilizing already existing space to store more than just an integer. It was also storing whether it, it's a very interesting question you guys should try it out. First missing positive. It says hard but it's only because uh, you can't solve it be before seeing similar problems like this. And the next question was best time to sell uh, stock 3. and this pretty this question was like a pretty easy dp i just had to like note down the states and i could solve it dp that has three different states and other than that it was like kind of fine like once you have all the states noted down everything should be fine the last question of or the 10th question was um, minimum speed to arrive which was like a binary search kind of question and also kind of simple uh it was listed as medium and all you had to do was like you know calculate the time at different times time stamps so that was 10 different questions and let's move on you would have seen that there are a lot of chinese and russian kids in the top charts of code forces right why do you think that is a case because solving competitive programming questions is all about consistency the more you can commit to solving questions every day you are going to better 12 year old kids did that so you can obviously do that one advice that i have for improving consistency is to like you know regularly give code forces at coder and maybe code chef keep giving as much contests as you can i think that is the best way to say consistent lead code is only for interview preparation so and you can keep on doing that list but it's very boring according to me and what you should do is try out these contests instead contest is like very rewarding you have this rating sometimes it's like also disappointing but most of the time when you see that rating going up you know that you are on the right track so that's a really good feeling so tips for consistency is to try giving contest and also maybe like include a bunch of friends who also solve questions solving alone can be like really boring but if you solve with friends who are also interested in the same thing that is the best thing you can do to stay consistent and keep moving forward so that was tip 2 so it's 11:56 the day is almost going to be over the questions we solved is this very simple 1d dp i solved that and then there was this one other question where we had to do search a 2d matrix this is a very common interview question so it's basically that all the rows and column are both sorted and we need to find a particular target number and uh, this is kind of actually a very conventional binary search interview question so i saw that so had to solve it so these are the questions that i did solve and for the remaining three questions i'm just going to refer to an old solution that i have and because the day is over and i want to finish with five complete questions that i'm talking to you guys about so power of x comma n calculates the power using something called as a binary exponentiation 
if you don't know what that is you should probably check it out it's a very interesting topic and trapping rainwater is another it's it's a sort of a greedy sort of problem but the way you approach this greedy problem is like very very interesting so you you see that the water trapping is based on like like the maximum left element and the maximum right element and there's a very interesting logic that goes behind this problem so i really recommend you check that out now merge case sorted list is a it's like a data structure problem it's a very nice combination of how we can like mix uh, i'll just show the description so we have like a bunch of linked list and we have to like they're all sorted and we have to merge them finally so it's a really interesting way of how we can use a, a priority queue in this case where you can where each priority queue is a simple pointer where each pointer head has a reference to the whole linked list in itself and so it's a very interesting question so those are the five problems and though we did not solve the last three you know we still had the time to refer them so we i'm going to assume it as 15 questions so there is this one tip that i've taken on the book 0 to 1 by peter thiel and that is this chapter on power law so a lot of the times it might happen that you are continuously solving problems and you feel like there is nothing changing in you and that is because all the effort that you put in while writing code also follows the power law that is initially all the amount of effort that you put in you might feel like there's nothing no improvement going on but there's going to be a very slight increment delta okay and eventually when you keep solving problems suddenly one day you'll notice that you are in a really great position but you'll never realize how you got there except for the fact that you kept on solving problems so the only way to become better at anything is to just keep doing it and the same goes on with lead code or code forces or like however you are pursuing competitive programming so just keep solving problems okay you might feel like there's no improvement happening but and i have been in that place a lot of times but towards the end of the day not exactly end of the day towards the end of 3 months or something you're going to look back and realize how far you have come but from day to day you might not feel like there's a significant difference but when you compare last 3 months of solving problems that is when you actually improve so follow the power law and everything trust the process trust yourself that you are improving and keep solving problems before we end the video i just wanted to say that this is this video is part of day 7 of 20 videos in 20 days challenge that i make one different video every day today we solve questions from lead code probably for the rest of the videos or probably hopefully that i i will never solve lead code ever again so do consider subscribing to the channel because i make like really really interesting content and you're going to see that on the suggestions like right now and so thank you for watching see you on a different video so bye